day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. But you know, you know, the question I wanted, I, I wanted to, to, to make sure you got that was, who have we, because I think I asked, asked the question, I think we answered the question from the parable. He's answering that, who you show mercy on. But my, my flip-flop question is, okay, what if that is not your neighbor? What do you do? What does that mean? What What is implied is, who's okay, your neighbor? Who, right? who are you talking about? Are you talking about the person who's half dead? Because the person who have dead, he he's looking for a name. He's looking for a name, right? And whoever shows up or not shows up, I mean, dictates who they are. The first people obviously were not his, his name. It wasn't nothing he can do about it that was going to change that. But what is he trying to? What what is Jesus saying then? Is he saying is that if you don't help the person, then that person is not your neighbor or? No, what he says is that. All he is is telling you he asked who the, the neighbor is. He asked the question at the end, so who is neighbor to the, to the man who fell by the wayside? Right. So, who is so, neighbor to him? Right. So, so the other people, if, the, if you identify the person as not your neighbor, the evil, if, are the other two a good example of what you should do for somebody you do not recognize as your neighbor? Uh, I, I think if you understand Jesus, if you understand what Jesus is actually saying, you can't ask that question. That, that's, that, that's that's where I'm at. That's not a legitimate question. Okay. Because he's trying to show you. After he he, he is for this man defining what neighbor is. He did. And right. he does it such a way that he comes back and says him. Now, now you tell me that you understand not what I'm saying. Yeah. Let me ask you. You right. said you didn't know who your neighbor was. Tell me if you know who your neighbor is now. Uh-huh. And go do so likewise. And see, in your line of questioning is like to say the opposite of what the law is. Right. So what is the opposite of the law? Right. Not the law. <laughs> <laughs> Real simple. I think the law, you know, it's very funny when you say that the law the Jews were respected. Remember, because I that's why I brought up by the fact is he was despised and rejected. The law seemed like it implies that the only people that it applies to was the Jews. Therefore, they could walk away from somebody that was not under the law. That was part of the law. It was their law. You, okay, so a neighbor is a neighbor. What, what what does that word mean? The law not going to make you a neighbor. So, a neighbor didn't say your 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 Jewish neighbor or your your Israelite neighbor. But it does sound like said when, neighbor, right? But if you go with the the pattern of behavior with the Samaritan woman, she said the Jews have nothing to do with us. Were they not their neighbor? Uh, not going to. Not according to the Jews, right? And I think some people, like you, when you said one time, you said weaponize the scriptures. Okay, um, but, but but what were the original laws that God gave? The original law prevented them from touching the dead folk. It prevented them from in, uh, interacting with the Samaritan. So the laws actually would not allow for them to be made. So, you, so the, the, ten, the Ten Commandments. The original laws said that the medical law that was written not 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 the not all the other laws that were added to it. I'm talking about the laws that God gave. The mm -hmm. other laws were to help to help them keep them laws, from my understanding. That's true. That's true. So Wait, you know those first those first two laws were way before. <laughs> but they were for who? Who were they huh? for? Who were those laws for? The Jews, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Here's, here's the laws here. Where is that law anyway about the neighbor? I don't so know. when those laws 
were given, were there only Jews there? Yeah. Who was trying to get them through the wilderness? They were all they were all written for Jews. Well, Jews. who was trying to get them through the wilderness? Those were not all Jews. That's what I'm saying. They were not all Jews. The ones that were in the midst of that that congregation, they were Jews. No. No, mm -hmm. no, too. Yo, know, all kinds of people came out of Egypt with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Benjamin, and, 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 and the written the commandments here, I don't, where is it love that neighbor? Where is it even said to love the Lord that God with all the heart and all that soul in the, the ones he spoke to on Sinai? These are the Ten Commandments, right? You gotta go to Exodus, you gotta go to, uh, I'm, in Exodus I'm in Exodus now. Y'all don't see it? 20. Mm -hmm. I'm in 20. I, I don't think I saw the, uh, I think I would, the, the one with that guy, that came somewhere, that came at another time. Uh, but the, the Ten Commandments that were given to the Jews, I, I don't think I saw, I don't think it's, there's nothing that said, love the Lord that God with all that heart and all that. So I think it came in Deuteronomy or something, didn't it? I don't think it came in Deuteronomy. Huh? First part. What did it say, first part? I'm not the first part. Right? Thou shalt love no other God before me. Right. Where's the part that said, love the Lord that God, all that heart, all that soul, all that mind? That came to Deuteronomy, didn't it? It didn't come in the Ten Commandments he read to them. No, no, not, not, I don't think, not in that verse, but I think. I think it came in Deuteronomy. It's it's it does come. Did anybody know? I think it does. It maybe no, it's not Deuteronomy. It's when they left the first time. Deuteronomy was the second time law was given. So, so the first Ten Commandments did not talk that way, right? It didn't say that. Let me see. I'm gonna look it up. Love the Lord thy God. With all thy heart. And now I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no God before me. You or said that it came from that thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Deuteronomy 30. Matter of fact, it's in Deuteronomy. Uh, verse 5, 6 5 is the first one that came up on it. Right here. Deuteronomy 6, 5. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah, Deuteronomy 6, 5. Matter of fact, it's, well, somebody put the title up there that said, Great is the greatest commandment. But, but this, is, this is the first time I I, uh, I think that came up. Is hear, O Israel. Remember that guy even quoted it, didn't he? In the in the in the in, the, in one of the passages in the New Testament. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul, with all thy might. And these words I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. Where's the neighbor one? What comes after that? You can't well, see now, it? now listen now. So, so you probably should give this a little bit of thought. Because when you look at the Ten Commandments, there are two people involved. God and your fellow man. Right. You look at the Ten, you actually look at the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. it's tell how you ought to relate to God and how you ought to relate to other people. Yes? When you look at the, you said when you look at how you, you look at the neighbor in the Ten Commandments? When you look at Exodus, uh -huh. that's what you see. How you ought to relate to God, how you ought to relate to your fellow man. Right, it does, yeah. Now what I think Jesus is doing is sucking all of that up and capitalizing it in the CIT. You know what? I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> 
I was, I, I promise you, I was thinking the same. I said, this is a CIT. All that up into one statement. Yeah. That's funny. That is but so funny. you <laughs> said? So, you know what? If that's the case, then the whole Bible can be stuffed up in the CIT for God so loved the world. Because the neighbor is the world, isn't it? Yeah. But God so loved the world. It was him that was the neighbor. Yeah. And he was the neighbor to the world. I'm going to say that your neighbor is, is the world. Yep. Not, not according to what Jesus told that, that Samaritan. I mean, what did he tell that lawyer? Who are you have mercy and compassion on? Well, in a sense, what he said to the emperor is that, as a pastor was saying earlier, while we were falling in sin, you know, while we were afflicted by sin, he came along the emperor. Yeah, even while we were yet in our sins, I think it was still like, while we were yet in our sins, the father sent his son, oh, you Hey, John 3.16 is the CIT. So the greatest neighbor has been the Lord himself. That's interesting. Um, I was wondering when that first was stated in there, that love that neighbor as that self. I was looking through the... Uh, maybe they read, because I think... No, I, I believe that is a CIT, Bishop. I believe that that is a CIT of the Bible, the old and new, <laughs> all, all in one step. Amen. But you know what? It's interesting. The person who quoted it one time was not Jesus, though. Because I'm just, I just want to bring that up. You talking about who was it, uh, Moses? It was one of the, uh, the, the one of the priests out there. In the two, New Testament, also, let me say you answered that discreetly. That's one one of the scriptures that our brother Addison brought up. You remember, brother Addison is one of the one of the other people that said it. The love that neighbor that side. Well, Jesus that was said, the that was the lawyer in response to Jesus' question. The other two scriptures, it was Jesus that one answering. Said, the map, this one right here was. Uh, I think it's Matthew 22. Right here. Yeah, 2234. Yeah, I don't think that was Jesus answering. 240? Jesus did answer. Let me see. The question. You want to say this? I think this one you did for that. What? So most of them, Mark, the one that said you're not far from the kingdom. Who's the one that said you're not far no, from the kingdom? That was Mark. That was Mark Mark. 12. Yeah, well, and I don't know if it's the thing that the lawyer that said it or one of the Pharisees said it. Mark it the lawyer, the lawyer, the lawyer, uh, let me see. So it was, uh, this is one of the scribes. Yeah, one of the scribes said it. He, he, and, and, and so I'm saying it's not what Jesus said, but I'm saying it's one of the uh, the uh, Jewish leaders said it. Wasn't he believing that from Old Testament writings? But that's what I was looking for. I was saying, where is the part? I got the part where it said the Deuteronomy here on Israel, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy mind. But the I part don't think it. Neighbor, where the neighbor part came in. So this, Let this me ask you a question. Part, isn't that in the covenant thing? Is that a portion we talked about covenant thy neighbor go for and so on? No bear false witness against thy neighbor. Well, I don't look at the rest of the Ten Commandments. You'll see it. That's right. Like, that's legit. You, and you wrote it up, right? I mean, not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Yeah. That's a not cover thy neighbor's house. Or well, thy neighbor's wife. Thy neighbor's wife. No his maid service, no men service. Now, anything that is thy neighbor, that law, the whole last part of those commitments are neighbor focused. The first yeah. part is God focused. 
Exactly. together and made one concise statement that said, here's the whole essence of the law. Yeah. I agree. I totally agree with you. I was just saying that the first time it was actually brought up was in Matthew 1233, Mark 1233. Beloved the link. Somebody rolled it up, right? Jesus did it. And I'm saying, obviously, children of Israel understood that too. Is that what you're saying, right? That, that's well, the Lord, that's the, obviously, there was a CIT done. Somebody did, yeah. Somebody <laughs> and, and, rolled and it they all encapsulated up. the law. And with two points. And, the, and, and, and yeah. Yeah, but he said into all. The great, and, into yeah. the great commandment. These are the great commandments. Yeah. This is my yep. CIT. Yeah, because everything else hang on it, right? He said that, didn't he? And yeah. if, if you do this love, Pete, all the law hang on this. So obviously Jesus told somebody <laughs> before he was here. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I think so. It was all rolled up because Deuteronomy was first was first mentioned. So I guess Moses and them realized, hey guys. Y'all gotta love each other. And I guess we're saying to ourselves, right? Because we're the Gentiles. And our neighbors are the Gentiles and the Jews. Who? Cool? Well, everybody outside of Christ is Gentiles. Right. <laughs> right. Everybody outside of Jews, everybody that's not born in Abraham, biological seed is a Gentile. Exactly. Right. Now, if you be in Christ, then you have have seed and air. According to the promises, so that, I think that that, that, that's Jews and Gentiles, but that's a spiritual rebirth. Unless we want to, unless we want to discuss, unless you want to discuss next week, who is your neighbor? I think we understand who the neighbor is. The neighbor is the extortioner, the murderer, the adulterer, yep, and anybody else. The ungodly, yep. the ungodly is your neighbor. Well, if they're showing compassion, no, 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 I they don't. You want to show compassion. Yeah, I mean, it, it actually, they don't show compassion. Then how could they, they be the neighbor? According oh. to, to, to what Jesus said, if they're not showing compassion, how could they be the neighbor? Right. How can, how can the, the person who was left half dead be the neighbor? So there's only uh -oh. one neighbor, and that was the man who showed compassion. That's true. And you know, that's really funny, though, because they are half dead. The ones that we've been sending messages to are dead. They're not half dead. They're dead. The answer to the question was, who was the neighbor, the one that you showed mercy to? I think, I think you right. The one who showed mercy to him. I think, I think you're missing the point. You're missing the whole point of what he's trying to teach about neighbor. He's trying to teach one aspect about neighbor. Yeah. Just one aspect. This, he told this guy that, that he had given the right answer. He comes back and says, but I don't know who my neighbor is. Right. He said, let me help you with that. Right. Who you show compassion at. Right. So basically what he tells him, yeah. your neighbor is anyone that you come upon that you can help that has need and you can meet that need. That's your neighbor. That's it. That's it. Right. That's it. That's the whole point, anyone. I think that's the whole point. So it's not just anybody floating out there, it's the person that you run in contact with that you can help. Because yeah. if you don't run in contact with that person, how can it be your neighbor? Yeah. But it's not to say they're not your neighbor, right? <laughs> it's not to say they're not your neighbor. But, but, well, it's not your neighbor because you can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> it's very simple. This guy trying, and what Jesus is trying to do, all he's trying to do is, See, this guy is trying to find a loophole for not doing what Jesus told him. Right. Yeah. Right. But he's, trying to, he's trying to find a way out of yeah, obedience. He's trying, to, he's trying to justify himself, period. Right. Not happening. What he's trying to do is, he doesn't actually want to have to leave Jesus knowing that he is expected to do this now. Yeah. Because he yeah. clearly understands what, 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 what Jesus told him. He now knows how to apply. Yeah. And be held accountable to it. And he'll and he'll see and see he don't want that. So he's trying to skirt this thing by saying, okay, so so who's my neighbor? Who's my neighbor? Right. He's like, let me let me let me let me walk you through something and at the end you can tell me who your neighbor is. Right. There's somebody in me.
and you respond to that need. And your subject to be to that to anybody. Is my point. Or do we need time? Well, all I was saying is that the way you the way you simply understand that is that what Jesus is saying is it is that person that you come in contact with, and that person has need, and you can help the need. You can meet that need. Yeah. That's the need. that's your name, right? And, and and what what was the point of the people, the Pharisees and the Sadducees could have helped them, and they didn't. What, what 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 was was he saying that was wrong because, because they didn't understand what they didn't understand they were just like this lawyer he showed them this is what you do when you don't know who your neighbor is right <laughs> describe, consider that to be his neighbor that 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 that, 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 uh, that priest didn't consider it to be his neighbor that <laughs> levi didn't consider it to be his neighbor but the samaritan understood that's my neighbor right. all that is is do unto others that we have been doing them, do you What would you want folks to do who passed by you? Exactly. And there was a, the one thing is it, 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 it eliminated the law from the scenario too. Because the law dictated that the Samaritans and the Jews not near each other. Right, right. But it eliminated the law. It wasn't by the law that that guy was saved. Right. By the spirit. I want to say to you, just so you'll know, that this this section of text is far more difficult than the, than the soul. Yeah, I agree. There's some complexities in here, right? Your your CIT for this one, in terms of his essence, he is for a far deeper truth than the soul. Right. I think so. And and and, and a, a margin order for a believer. Man, there are all kinds of implications in this text. It is. I, I, yes. that, 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 that's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, oh, can, right. can, you know, I, I see one thing is so a neighbor is a is a neighbor to the person like my next door neighbor is my neighbor basically is what this is saying guy next to him but also i'm his neighbor so it goes both ways so the the man who helped was a neighbor and the man who needed help was a neighbor right Right. You have to help the person in need if God called you to do it. That's you don't have to the, the, the way the question was posed. A potential neighbor. Yeah. I was going to say the way the question was posed is the one that took action that proved himself to be a neighbor. He is it, not being neighbor to the guy that's helping him. The guy who's helping him is being neighbor to him. Neighbor to you. Yes. And and that that's what I'm saying. Right. So. But, you may be neighbor to your neighbor, but your neighbor may not be the guy that lives next to him who may not be a neighbor to you. But, but all, all this is really this kind of ancillary stuff. You ain't, you ain't got to the stuff yet. You ain't <laughs> dealt with the stuff yet. The stuff. And then, I'm waiting to see what you're going to deal with the stuff. The stuff ain't been dealt with yet. <laughs> That's a point. <laughs> That's what I said when I was CIT. I want to know what the CIT is. From that, we can launch all kinds of stuff. I think so. The, the part of our helping your neighbor is the part I want to get. <laughs> the role of the church to reach out to who? To the world. The world. Yeah. And that's why I said that the, the, the man that was wounded represents the spiritual dead. And, 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 and I'm still I'm still at the point of the man that showed compassion was the neighbor. Yeah, to the one who needed compassion. Who needed compassion. And that's why I keep going back to that is, in my mind, Christ yeah. is my neighbor. Yeah. And I'm to love Christ as myself. Yeah. 
And, and you supposed to love the other guy called Christ loves you. Uh, so it's, it's like passing it forward. Why, why would you love the other people? Yes, I'd like to look at what he said. If you go back to the answer that the lawyer gave, I'm going back to it. But He's I said, not we, we, we have this. God as a neighbor. He put God in one category. Yep. Yeah. Your fellow man in another category. So there are two categories of people in this answer. Right. And neighbor. And he tells you how to respond to both of them. Now with God, he actually tells you that you are the law of God above yourself. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Right. Your neighbor is to be loved as yourself, but God is worthy. God is to be viewed as being far more important than your own life. Yeah. He tells you to love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. All What's your left? <laughs> about your neighbor. He just tell you to love your neighbor as yourself. But God is worthy of dying for. Yeah. But now, the catch is, but you can't you can't show that kind of love of God apart from showing it toward another person. Yeah. Exactly. Which is why we're back to say the image of God is us. Well now, I, I don't think that's implying image at all. I think it's, what it's implying is is the that the Basically, this is what Jesus said in another text. He said, where your treasure is, what you value more than anything else, is where your heart is. And basically what he's saying is, God is supposed to be your treasure. Amen. And what is man? Your second treasure. God is supposed to be your treasure. It, it is, it is, it is God who you are supposed to have and to set your affection on above everything else, even more than yourself. Right, right. Because you remember now, in the last day, men are gonna become lovers of their own self rather than lovers of God. Or other things, right? <laughs> so you see, so it, it, it going back to the script people quoted earlier. For God so loved the world, He sacrificed Himself for it. Uh -huh. His love is expressed in His sacrificial redemption. Right now, you ain't born of God. If that ain't in you. See? And now we're talking. That's true. That's what we're talking about. That's right. If you ain't got no love in you, and that's what he said. If you, especially when we're talking about hate, right? He said if, if you have no, if you hate your brother, you have no eternal life in you. We said. So that's, that's what I was getting out of it. So, so man is loving 21, and we got to wrap it up somewhere. Uh, <laughs> Everybody has a focus for next week. CIT on love. I want is a CIT for this one. We, we ain't going nowhere until we get a CIT for this one. <laughs> well, you, right. I, you, you made it rejected by CIT, but I, I said, we got a CIT now. But I, you know what? I, I think this, that's a good point. Let's bring a good point here. Is when, you, when people come to uh, this type of study and, and we put the CIT, we have a CIT. We should write a final CIT based on the input from everybody. I mean, we could actually virtually put together a final CIT. Wow. I think so. I think, I think it would limit our thinking. What do you mean? If we came up with a central idea for this, we might settle on that as being the conclusion of the matter. Well, I, I understand uh, what Pastor Taylor is saying by trying to develop a CIT based on everyone's CIT, if that's what he's saying. Right. But I don't. I think that each individual CIT needs to stand on its own. 
yeah. in relation to that little scripture also. 